Hi everyone, my name is Michael and I am currently studying at UCLA. Today I will be presenting our BQSR acceleration paper. Genome sequencing is one of the most important applications in the health industry. It allows healthcare professionals to be able to identify and treat specific health issues that may arise in the patient. In fact, the cost of genome sequencing has decreased, and faster than Moore's Law. Roughly two decades ago, it would cost $1 million to sequence the human genome. Now it costs roughly $1,000. However, genome sequencing is a time-consuming process. According to an Intel white paper running GATK, it took about 1.5 days for a 36-core CPU to process 30x coverage the whole human genome. Here is the following breakdown of that process. The first step is to get raw and map reads from a sequencing machine. A read is a strand of DNA sequence. The next step is to perform genome alignment, where sequence of DNA are arranged so that they may be identified as a trait. Next comes the mark duplicate step. Here identical aligned sequences are identified. The next step is to correct systematic errors introduced by the sequencing machine, also known as base quality score recalibration. This makes up the data preprocessing pipeline. After recalibration, the reads are ready for variant discovery. This is where a known sequence is compared to an unknown sequence. GATA handles steps from mark duplicate to variant discovery. There are prior works in accelerating part of the genome sequencing pipeline. For example, in map to reference, there are hardware accelerators for Smith Waterman and S. M, e, M, and in variant discovery, there are accelerators for the pair hidden Markov model. No prior work on hardware acceleration for Mark duplicates and BQSR have been performed, and yet the total time for BQSR accounts for 20% of GATK execution time. Why is BQSR important? Because the short variant algorithms rely heavily on the quality score assigned to the individual bases in each sequence read. This quality score tells us how much we can trust a particular observation. If we have a base that has a low quality score, that means we're not sure we actually read it correctly, and it could actually be something else. To build the recalibration model, BQSR goes through all the bases and all the reads and tracks data about the following covariates. What read group the read belongs to, also known as read group covariate? What quality score reported by ma the machine, also known as quality covariate? What machine cycle produced this base, also known as the cyclical covariate? What is the current base and the previous bases, also known as the context covariate? Essentially, we are building histograms for these covariates. There are two main steps in BQSR. The first step is to convert the genome data to an index for the BQSR table. And finally, the second step is to update the BQSR table with a value. There are challenges in accelerating BQSR. The first is that the four tables combined take large amount of storage. Having one copy of the four tables required roughly 8.7 megabytes. This would already eat up all of the BRAM on an FPGA. Another challenge is to resolve random memory access. In BQSR, the indices do not come in a particular order. For example, in one iteration, index 10 comes first. Then it is followed by index 11. Here we can see that there is no memory conflict. However, let's say in the next iteration, I still have index 10 update first. Then it is followed by another index 10. As we can see here, there is a memory access conflict since the first update has not completed. This means that pipeline interval is equal to the amount of cycles needed to do that data type operation. In BQSR, this is a double precision operation. There are prior works in resolving memory access conflicts for histograms. We could duplicate tables. However, the duplication number is equal to the cycles needed. This is not possible as it would require 16 table copies and URAM instances are very limited. Another method is to use MapReduce. However, the resources needed for MapReduce is proportional to the number of elements. This is not scalable for our requirements. Another challenge is that BQSR has many control flow dependencies. As an example, let's take a look at this code snippet. If the read has a certain characteristic, the code needs to find the complement of the base and store it in reverse order. If not, do something else. If this were to be accelerated on a GPU, there would be branch divergence, which would cause instruction replay. 
With all the challenges listed above, BQSR is still a good candidate for FPGA acceleration. For storage requirements, we can use dedicated large on-chip memory. In this case, Xilinx FPGAs have Ultra RAM. For the VCU1525 chip, there is about 30 megabytes of VRAM. We can also reduce precision for the tables. We can downgrade 64-bit to 32-bit when counting frequency and use double to single point precision. Therefore, we can reduce table size by oh, two times. To resolve memory access conflicts, we need to find an intermediate that can complete in one cycle. Therefore, we should use integer intermediates. For BQSR, the values are between 0 and 1, with 1 not being included. As an example, we can convert 0.01 .01 to integer by multiplying a very large value to it. After the indices have been calculated and the values been converted to integer, we then do local accumulation in a queue. The queue size is the amount of cycles needed for the data type operation. This is to guarantee that the table updates will not see the same index in that many cycles. Now let's see how this merge queue works. First, an element of the queue is sent to the table update. Then the incoming element is checked to see if there's an identical index in the rest of the queue. If not found, insert the incoming element into the queue at the position where it was passed to the table update function. Now we repeat the same steps as before. The second position of the queue is passed to the table update function. Then the incoming element is matched to the rest of the queue. This time there is an index match at position 1. So we just accumulate there. The frequency count is increased by 1 and the incoming value added to the queue value. Again, now position 3 is passed to the table update function. This time, there is no matching index, and so insert at the third position of the queue. Note that after 16 cycles, the pointer will be back at position 1. This queue essentially works in a round-robin fashion. In the original software version of GATK, each covariate had its own index generator. On an FPGA, we want to reduce this redundancy. Therefore, we merge the loops together where possible. Here is a code snippet. Since each base needs to be processed, it is possible to merge the loops together, creating equivalent conditions, as seen here. There are additional optimizations to improve frequency and achieving a fully pipeline design. First is the LATTE optimization. The way LATTE works is by checkpointing inputs from DRAM to the processing elements. This eases routing, allowing for higher design frequency. Next is to reorganize the data so that it can be easily parsed in a single cycle. Originally, the data was organized by field. This led to random strata access since each read can have different number of bases, as seen in the example below. However, by organizing by bases, the position axis at each field is now f at a fixed interval. After applying all these methods, this is our FPGA design. There are a total of four processing elements. Each processing element handles four reads for load balancing reasons. Within each processing element, there are 10 parallel histogram updates. The quality, context, and cycle tables are partitioned along the first dimension, as seen in the table mentioned earlier. This allows for parallel uh, histogram updates. Our design shows promising results when compared to the CPU. The CPU is a dual socket Xeon E5 revision 4 which uses Apache Spark framework and it stops scaling after 16 threads. Our design can achieve 4.8x speedup compared to the 56 thread and 35x speedup when compared to single thread. Note that the genomes are subsampled to allow for a single core to finish in a reasonable amount of time. Here are the results when using floating points instead of double precision. The errors are within acceptable range, less than 0.25% for the highest one. Unfortunately, we cannot use half precision as it overflowed. In summary, URAMs are extremely limited. It is easy to solve throughput issues by duplicating resources, but for URAM it should be done last. One way to have high throughput while limited resources is to recast data type. In BQSR, we can avoid duplicating each table 16 times by using integer immediate, then recasting to double at the actual table update. 
And finally, we would like to acknowledge the support from Center for Domain Specific Computing and its industrial partners, including Huawei, Samsung, and VMware, Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, Simon Fraser University New Faculty Startup Grant, and Xilinx. We would also like to thank Brian Hill for earlier discussions for BQSR acceleration, Marcy Bond for editing our paper, and Amazon for AWS credit donations. Thank you.